because every NFL team has a window where they can win and they compete and the money works for everybody, you know, but at some time now you got to pay everybody. So that's why the windows are very short. So they're going to have to pay uh, Dak. They're going to have to pay CD lamb. Um, I think that kind of scared away from Derek, uh, Derek Henry and other like free agents that they want to sign. I said they should go in all in. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with us today on this Top Shelf Tuesday edition, Captain for Life, Will Cotton. Will, how you doing, man? Doing great. We finally got rid of the winter. Now we're fully 100% in spring. You can see it in the polo. And I'm ready to go. I'm ready to All go. Right. And it's Memorial Day weekend, so it's summer kickoff, so I'm sure the kids will be at the pool. But uh, on this Top Shelf Tuesday edition, it's a special edition, folks, because we're going to do some off-season quarterback discussions. So in segment one, we're going to talk about the stars. In segment two, we're going to talk about the rookies. And in segment three, we're going to talk about the comebacks. So let's go ahead and get started. The 2024-2025 NFL season is here. We are in the middle and in the midst of organized team activities, also called OTAs. Mandatory mini camps start next week. All right. So let's talk about the stars, Will. First star I want to talk about. Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes. So Patrick Mahomes had to come out and defend the character of Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker during the opening sessions of OTAs last week. He also had to talk about Rasheed Rice, who let's just say has been involved in two separate off-field incidents. We'll start with Butker, Will. He became embroiled in controversy for comments he made while addressing female graduates during a 20-minute commencement address. During the speech, he mentioned to the women in the audience saying they had the most diabolical of lies told to them and that while some may go on to lead successful careers, the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. He used his wife as an example, saying she embraced one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. Mahomes said he didn't necessarily agree with the comments, but he chose to judge him by the character that he shows every day. Rice, on the other hand, has been present for OTAs, but he also has been involved in multiple vehicle crashes as well as a separate assault incident. Will, you've got your starting quarterback on the two-time Super Bowl champion talking about two incidences that you as an organization probably don't want to talk about. How are you feeling about Patrick's offseason and how it's starting off? I think it's, you know, standard stuff. But, you know, when you have a good organization, you know, and if we all remember they had Kareem Hunt maybe a couple of years ago when he got in some issues, uh, you know, they, they swiftly and handle it. So I think the, the chiefs just have a really good job of handing their, 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 um, you know, all the problems that are coming out and things like that. Just like you did coach. Remember when we did, everything was in house. I mean, people would ask questions and all the, and trust me that they've talked to Patrick. They said, look, they're going to ask you about Harrison. They're going to ask you about uh, rice. You know, and this is this is the what you're going to tell him. This is the the, the playbook. You know, mm-hmm. just like you as a quarterback, this is what you're going to say. So he did everything he needed to do. Um, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it's, it's sometimes free speech. Uh, you know, upsets people. I'm not. You know, I'm not. It, that's what. That's the great thing about America. You can say what you want. Um, you just kind of have to stand on those things. Uh, Rasheen Rice. I'm sure he will get some time. I'm sure you know some dis- disciplinary kind of thing will come through. But they're not worried about them. They're not worried about him. Um, they're standard. You know, they know how to answer it. They're ready to roll, man. So I think it's much ado about nothing for, for Kansas City, as long as Pat Mahomes' arm is okay. <laughs> See, they're all, they can keep rolling, baby. Yeah, real quick on my end, that's what you're supposed to do. Address the elephant in the room one time. And now for the rest of the year, he can say, we address that in OTA. We address that in OTAs. Oh, yep. We've already talked about that. So on the kids, on to the next game. All right. So Dallas, many have wondered about Dak Prescott, this contract. Uh, he is entering his player option year. 
as somebody who's entering their own player option year, I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, the price keeps going up. He is in the final year of a four-year, $160 million deal that he signed in 2021. He also has a no-trade clause in his contract, and the team cannot use the franchise tag. Detroit signed Jared Goff to a $53 million annual salary, including a $73 million signing bonus, and a lot of quarterbacks are up for their deal. Also in Texas, Will, they've been winning a lot. Texas Rangers won the World Series. Dallas Mavericks are killing it. Dallas Stars are playing well. But the Dallas Cowboys can't seem to get over the hump. So how you handling Dax, sir? Talk to him. Well, it's getting very kind of complex um, because every NFL team has a window where they can win and they compete and the money works for everybody, you know, but at some time now you got to pay everybody. So that's why the windows are very short. So they're going to have to pay uh, Dak. They're going to have to pay CD lamb. Um, I think that kind of scared away from Gary, uh, Derek Henry and other like free agents that they want to sign. I said, they should have went all in. They should have got Chris Jones and they should have made a play on Derek Henry. And, you know, I think now they're getting cheap. I think they're getting cheap. I think the worst thing we do is they leave Dak, you know, if they leave him go, they need to pay him. I mean, you can't go anywhere in this league without a quarterback. I mean, Kirk Cousins is not the best quarterback, but people keep people keep signing them and the team, they do pretty well. They, I mean, they're not winning playoff games like, you know, but they relevant, you know, so that's how you go. But I, I, I you know, and I'm going to throw something well. at you, Will. Didn't they sign Trey Lance? Uh, I just know, asked, didn't they sign Trey Lance? I mean, it's one of the Trey Lance a little younger? Isn't Trey <laughs> Lance a little younger? <laughs> I can't wait to watch Dallas in the preseason. You know me. Because you know me. going to play a lot. Trey Lance is going to play a lot. Oh, we and need to see books. to look good, then all year long, we don't need Dax. Maybe we don't need Dax. Anyway, okay. No, nah, Bigfoot. Bigfoot will come and show us who he is, and we we've been very truthful about him, uh, Keats. If you know what's going on, so <laughs> okay, all right. Finally, in segment one, you can't get much bigger than Aaron Rickin Rodgers. The 2023 season was supposed to be a big one for the Jets, and it didn't happen because on the first game, first few <laughs> plays, Aaron Rodgers was gone for the season. Okay, towards Achilles, just four plays into the season. And now Aaron Rodgers is tooting his horn. He says, we are must-watch TV. It's pretty obvious. Everybody knows that. Love him or hate him. Aaron Rodgers is right. It's must-see TV. People want to see him play, even though he's only won one Super Bowl. And so is Trent Dilfer. But I digress. What are you thinking about the Jets and Aaron Frick? And Rogers on TV all year, like Caitlin Clark, like Caitlin Clark, and and Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I don't know who's going to be on TV more. What do you think, Will? Uh, more, hey, more Aaron Rodgers, man. It was terrible last year when we had to watch Zach Wilson for for eleven or twelve weeks. It was unbearable. Oh Lord, say what you want about Aaron Rodgers, but the the NFL is much better when he is on the field. One, it's going to be a lot more exciting, and two. He won't be at that time to spew all his, you know, political nonsense going around. <laughs> Keep that man playing. But I'm excited. It'll make better. It'll make better for the NFL. Um, he's not lying, you know, and it'll make it a little more interesting in the uh, sports betting world, too. So I, I'm, I'm all with it, man. Oh, man, they, they, they're, they're teasing me. But fans, when we get back, it's all about the rookies in segment two. See how we're doing with the rookies. We'll be right back on the High Coaches Podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student-athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book, so I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Fowler and Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, 
I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two. We're going to talk about some of the rookies going on. And let's start with Chicago Bears and Caleb Williams and Will. Rumor has it that he has it looked very good. A little bit of up and down this the offseason. We're in shorts and t-shirts, but you already have uh, wide receiver DJ Moore noting growing pains for the number one overall pick and safety uh, Kevin Bayard, who joined the Bears in free agency, said, uh, I said something to the end of practice to him, like, keep it going. We're going to keep making you better. Uh, it's not necessarily saying he had a bad day, but the Bears defense is supposed to be pretty good. What are you thinking about Caleb Williams now that all the noise is done and now we're starting to play some football? Let's get back to football. He's been on a you know a show. He's been going to Japan. He's going on these draft shows, going on podcasts, and you know, now get back to football. It's gonna take some time for his, you know, get his feet wet and get back to his timing and things like that. I think he's a football player, so he should pick it up pretty easy. I don't see that he's going to, you know, I mean, the things they're saying, they're saying, oh, they're late or he's holding on to the ball too early. I mean, that's rookie stuff. I mean, that's rookie stuff. Just getting used to the speed of the game. Um, you know, now, if it's week eight, week nine, and, <laughs> and we've seen those things still, then we got some real issues. But it's his growing pains, man. It's the first time he's met with his teammates um, you know, see what they like, what they don't like, where you want the ball, where you like it, you know, what plays do we like, what what plays work best with us. Um, and we probably even scratch the surface on plays. They're probably doing the basic stuff, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? So uh, let's everyone just take it, you know, like 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 your boy Aaron Rodgers says, calm down. Relax, <laughs> so baby, gonna, relax. Relax. You're gonna be and, okay. And coach Matt Eberflutes. I hope I said it right. He already named him the starter. So whatever it is, is whatever it is. Because you said there's no competition. So, yeah. all right. We're going to move to Denver. Shout out to Akil. Uh, the Denver Broncos closed out the first week of OTAs. Sean Payton, who hasn't won without Drew Brees, was quick to praise all three quarterbacks in the competition, including rookie Bo Nix. Payton has been cleared at Bo Nix, Jared Stidham, and Zach Wilson, who the Broncos acquired in the trade with the Jets, all have a chance to play. Um, let's just say Bo Nix has had a few college games, 61. Um, so he's he's got some reps in. What are you thinking about the Denver quarterback situation? And is Bo Nix going to play as a <laughs> I, uh, One of my best friends, Ali Ghanem, says, if you have two or three quarterbacks, you really have zero quarterbacks. Um, it's not looking good. And let's be, let's look at, let's look at it. If your name is now Drew Brees, Peyton hasn't done really well with with any quarterbacks. He's never done anything with Taysom Hill or Teddy uh, Bridgewater, none of the guys that he played with. I mean, it's, you know, it's just a matter of time before they fire him. And they, they're just not, <laughs> not at that they're salary. Not, not at that salary. <laughs> it's just not good. He was better oh. off keeping with Russ. And, but, you know, and, and, and move forward. That would have hitched my horse on that. I'd say, okay, Russ, you in? You and me are going to do it. And if we get fired in two years, then we're both gone. But I'm not riding with Bo Nix and, 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 and Zach Wilson. <laughs> if, if, if Jared card, Stidham, Zach Wilson, and Bo Nix is your quarterback room. I think I'm taking the under. <laughs> would be terrible. You can combine all of them and they'd be, te- they, they'd be, they'd be under 500. They're terrible. I wouldn't do it. Not and good. fans, I'm actually going to be in Colorado in December speaking at the Learning Forward Conference. Looking forward to that. Might be extra interested to see if uh, the Broncos are playing that weekend. Okay, at home. 
All right, the Minnesota Vikings search for a new quarterback has consumed them this offseason. And here's the quarterback room. Sam Darnold and rookie J.J. McCarthy. So, hey, the Vikings picked him with a high pick. Do they view Sam Darnold as a long-term fix, or is J.J. McCarthy going to slide in week one? What are you thinking, Will? They should start looking to trade Justin Jefferson because they ain't going to keep that guy with those two bums. Let's just let's just keep it real. Unless they come out and, and, and you know, turn the world on fire with their, their play, we've seen Darnold ain't going to do it. You know, J.J. McCarthy, uh, I don't think he's doing, he's that guy. Mike King um, doesn't. Mike, I don't think I don't think he's that guy. Um, so I think if I was the Vikings, it's like, look, let me go ahead and trade Justin Jefferson and get some picks and or some or some cap space and you know try and build around JJ McCarthy because they're kind of one of those teams that's like one foot in, one foot out. They don't really know what they're not really fully into the re- rebuild, but they're also like not really moving the right direction to win. You know, well, so let me push back a little. Yeah. Sam Darnold, did he really have an opportunity to showcase his skill? He was picked pretty high, and now him and J.J. head up. He should be able to beat J.J. out straight up with just his ability, shouldn't he? Shouldn't he be that that under-the-radar pick that may be the comeback player of the year? I don't know. Did I sell you? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. You know, I'm, I think, you know, I think – We've looked at Sam Darnold as a bust. Um, he's been he's, he's been did in. Did he win a Heisman? I don't know. Did he? I don't think so. No, no, he didn't win it. But I mean, you know, uh, if he's going to be just a step a stopgap, then I can live with two or three games, maybe eight weeks. You know, at some point, you want to put you know JJ McCarthy in there and say, you know, do what you got to uh, do. But there's that's no what rush. the preseason's for, baby. And yeah, this is why the NFL's king, because I'm watching. Preseason football for the backups. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get those starters out of there. Let us see these backups. Yep. Because now, because the seasons are now are going to be eighteen games or nineteen games. So those backup quarterbacks are going to get very important. You know, they're going to be very important. That's why they're getting paid. You know, um, what, what your boy Howell? Howell got paid. You know, um, you know, just to be a backup. You know. So I'm telling you, man, it's 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 a, it's a marathon now. So yeah, right. it's going to be interesting. Well, fans, in segment three. Don't call it a comeback, but we've got some quarterbacks on the mend that we definitely want to talk about. Be right back on the Our Coaches Podcast. Why should student athletes use the CKA Save Project Academic and Athletic Consulting Services? Over the past 15 to 20 years, colleges, universities, professional sports teams, business organizations, and others have increased their use of consulting services to improve their decision making processes and results. Over the same time, the athletic and academic landscape has changed for high school and college student athletes as the NCAA has raised initial academic eligibility requirements for student athletes while decreasing the number of transfer restrictions. Former college student athletes have noted that they were academic and athletically unprepared for the rigors of college. Let the TKA Save Project's close to 30 years of academic and athletic experience help guide student athletes to increase success as we work to help student athletes achieve the goal of obtaining a college degree. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at CKA at CKASaveProject.org. Welcome back to the Our Coaches Podcast in segment three. Let's talk about the comebacks and first one will my guy, Kirk Cousins in Atlanta. So Raheem Morris and most of his staff, including offense coordinator Zach Robinson, are new to the Falcons. Kurt's new, Raheem Morris is new, everybody's new. Kurt's coming off of a, a terrible injury. But is this the time because everything seems to be lining up for Atlanta? What say you, sir? Well, they got a bum division, so anybody can win. Uh, they're going to be exciting. I mean, you know, they have the weapons that they need to be. Uh, I think they're going to have some fun props for us on a FanDuel or DraftKings. Uh, strictly for entertainment purposes. Strictly only. entertainment, you know. Um, but Kirk Cousins is, is, is stability. 
You know, Kirk Cousins is the guy who's going to show up at 6 a.m. He's going to have his coffee. He's going to be at his, you know, right at the the studying room and the film room and go, you know, he's doing to do the things that he needs to do as an employee would see. Um, and I hope other guys will follow him now that he's getting older. They say this guy is how he's sustained in the league and he's made good money. Why? Because can't he's wait up to early. watch Michael Penix, baby. Preseason yeah. Atlanta football. I'm locked in with the popcorn to see Michael Penix because Kurt's still not going to play because that money's guaranteed. So I ain't no going way. out there. You going no out way. there. I'm not doing no, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't put no name on me in the nope, nope, nope. But it'll be fun. They'll be a fun team, a young team, and I think they'll be focused on winning. I I expect them to win the division. To be honest, yes, and 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 that might be one of those season long totals that I like to do. All right, moving on. Cleveland Browns and Deshaun Watson, and shout out to Coach Franchise because we have uh, a lost episode or two based on talking about Deshaun Watson off the field. He continues to make progress after his season-ending surgery in November to repair a displaced fracture in the glenoid in his throwing shoulder. None of that sounds good, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Watson said in April that he's been throwing full speed, and general manager Andrew Barry said he expects Watson to be ready at the start of the season. Watson said he also hopes to participate in the OTAs at minicamp, but he has yet to be cleared to practice without restrictions. <sighs> the AFC North is a beast and a juggernaut. What do you think about Deshaun Watson coming back? It's going to be a tough season uh he played pretty he played was old. he must have been kind of injured during the season before he got pulled because he wasn't playing like amazing amazing uh but he's been a great teammate you know after all the things that happened he's been able to kind of he was on the sideline and he was showing love and he was you know got the mask on and the calling plays so he was very very uh you know he was into it you know very on to the, the the game you know what i'm saying he's still 28 so he, you know, he's not like he's 35 or 36, and you're like, man, that shoulder is not coming back. He's 28, so uh, he could be. I think they're being very cautious. Um, like you said, this is going to be a, a, a long. It's going to be season. a hard year. It's going to be a long. The AFC there's North. No, <laughs> there's no reason, no reason to rush him there in 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 May. You know, what I'm saying? It's, it's May. Don't rush him now. <laughs> Let him do his thing. When it's time to play, he'll be ready to go. You'll be a much better team as under center. Who's and their backup? I don't even know who their backup is. Uh, man, I'm, they got rid of all the guys that were really good. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens. All but right. they'll be all right. I think they'll be okay. They have a great defense, and they still have a good offense. You know, and they still have a decent Nick Chubb out coming back, and um, they have some other. They have other uh, running back that was pretty good last year. I forgot his name, but he he kind of filled in. So we'll see. They're gonna have talent. Um, just how they build it together, and if they can stay healthy. All right, the Carolina Panthers. Man, did they let me down last year, but I can't hold on to that. So you had Bryce Young as the number one pick, and he's looking good in helmets and T-shirts, okay? He, he's throwing the ball. He's doing the thing. And Will, Frank Wright said he, 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 he got a swag back, okay, because uh, Frank Wright got – I'm sorry, Frank Wright didn't say it. But the players there said he got a swag back after being with Frank Wright, uh, being fired after a one and ten start last year. He got another big weapon with Jonathan Brooks, and if you're into the uh, fantasy things, let's uh, keep an eye on him. And remember, Peyton Manning didn't have the best first year. Troy Aikman didn't have the best first year. Have I sold you on Bryce Young? Oh, I think the kid has talent. I think the organization just isn't good. I just don't think they're just not that good. But, you know, like you said, you got Deontay Johnson now. Uh, that should kind of spark it up a little bit. Um, but still, you know, he's the, his biggest thing is always going to be he's a little, little guy. Um, you know, so unless he can grow five inches or puts on, on, you know, 20, 30 pounds, people will always have those questions. Um, but it's good that he's getting better. I think the best thing that he could do last year was finish the season. He didn't get hurt. You know, he didn't miss any games, so he was able to get better. You know, you can't get better if you're not, if you're hurt. So I expect him to be a little better. I expect the the playbook to be opened up a little bit more for him. Uh, he's a little bit, now he's 
comfortable in the in the NFL, uh, I think he'll do a little better. Now, do I think he'll make the Pro Bowl? No, I don't think so. But I think he's going to have well, everybody makes the throw. Pro Bowl these days. Oh yeah, yeah, you and me make the Pro Bowls. <laughs> a couple people get canceled. So, but I think you know the Panthers won't be as two and fourteen. You know, maybe they be five and 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 whatever it is, five and eleven or six and ten. But I don't expect them to be two and fourteen or two and fifteen. Well, they owe me from last year, so yeah, maybe yeah, I'll yeah. hang around with them. Uh, finally, Mike King's not here, but we're going to talk about the New York Giants, and Daniel Jones is already back on the field during OTAs, and he has no doubt, Will, that he'll be ready for week one against the Minnesota Vikings despite tearing his ACL late last year. He has shown no ill effects doing seven on seven drills. Uh, the goal has always been to be cleared for week one. So again, giant preseason games. Who's going to be quarterback? Can Danny Dimes still do it? Because they signed no. him to a four year, one hundred sixty million dollar deal last season. No, what do you think? I think <laughs> no. I think he spent all the time getting better. I think. He started to feel the pressure because people were saying they were going to take a quarterback in the draft. I think he's starting to get a little sweat because he knows that he got to get on that. He, the only way you can compete is you got to get on the field. So, yeah, he's on. I feel like he's on. I, th I think maybe even told some people, like, I'm feeling great. My knee is looking good, even if it may not be true. Um, but we'll see what happens. I don't think he's good. So I think the best thing you can do is – his best ability is availability. Available. That's about it. So <laughs> that's all they can do until then. But, you know, they don't have any backup. They don't have uh, like a veteran that they can go to. So they're going to have to. And I don't again, you got rid of Saquon. I don't know how much better can you get. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much better you get. You know, so we'll see. Hopefully they got um, uh, the receiver. I forgot the, the wide receiver they drafted in the first the first round. Nate, uh, um, I forgot his name, but he's supposed to be a dog. Uh, but they immediately uh, turned off that uh, that bet that him and uh, Jaden Daniels. Ah, yes, because <laughs> yes. yes. I guess he saw some stuff. He's like, oh, hell no, we ain't going. <laughs> I ain't doing that. No, no, we're having some issues with that right now. <laughs> That's gonna be some rookie symposium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so fans, to close, in the first year of the show, came out and said, I think quarterback is the most overvalued and overrated position in football. I still stand by that statement, see Brock Purdy. So the market for the position, if you did the top 10, it's about 49 to 50 million if you did the average of the top 10. That's about what I would pay. Fans who know me, Will's going to laugh. I drive a Hyundai for a reason. It's a good economical car that'll last a long time. Sometimes I keep them a little longer than I should, but that's okay. <laughs> you don't have to overpay for the position, but teams still won't listen to me. Trent Dilfer, Joe Flacco, Brad Johnson, and Russell Wilson all have one Super Bowl win. Brock Purdy's been to a Super Bowl. Jalen Hurts has been to a Super Bowl. Jimmy Garoppolo has been to a Super Bowl, and so is Colin Kaepernick. So for all of you who are about to overpay for your quarterbacks and not have any linemen to block for them, Cincinnati, good luck this season. We wish you well. And on behalf of Captain for Life, Will Cotton, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the Out Coaches podcast, and we'll see you on the sidelines. Until next time. Take care, and remember, you can't throw on your back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Odd Coaches Podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at cksaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. 
The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to The Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow The Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.cka.saveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.